In today's topic, I mean, this is an announcement. You already know that there was a quiz planned today. Uh, however, with your prayers, uh, it has been postponed to the next class now. Now I'm, I'll, I'll include the slavers, whatever we'll cover in this lecture in the quiz, right? It, it would help you actually, it would be for your benefit, like you'll get a flavor of all different topics and this is going to help you in your midterms, right? Because now before the mids, there would be only one quiz. We are not left with so many classes before the mids. So mid midterm exam is conducted after the eighth class, eighth lesson, and it's fifth lesson already. So if we'll conduct our quiz in the sixth lecture, obviously I won't be able to conduct an other quiz just, you know, uh, uh, like uh, in, in, in the eighth lesson. So there would be only one quiz and I'm covering, I'll cover or I'll include all the topics that we would we, we have already started up till now and whatever we will cover in this class. So that, that's important to please, whatever we study today, uh, we be focused on that. <clears throat> right, if you remember, uh, like I had been again and again telling you one thing, and that is we are going to study four different project selection methods. One is the payback period. Next one is the net present value. And then next one is the PI or uh, benefit to cost ratio or profitability index. We like use both names for this. And then it's IRR, right? <clears throat> and before these, uh, uh, we, we started actually these studying these techniques. Uh, we started a concept uh, that was called as time value of money, right? So we are done with the time value of money. We are done with the payback period. And now today we'll try to cover both of these like net present value. And if time permitted, we'll also study the profitability index, right? So now <clears throat> if you remember uh, when we were studying the payback period, uh, we, uh, discuss certain important points, like apart from the procedure uh, to calculate or the method to calculate the payback period, there were some important aspects uh, or, or points that, that I told you. The first point was, when to use payback period? Can someone tell me? When do we use payback period? Sir, I would like to answer. Yes, sir. Uh, when the investor is not aware of the terms, the financial terms, then okay. we better use the payback period. Very and right. Use it when the economy is stable and the discount mm. rate is very low. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we use it when the investment is for a very short term. Very right. Very right. Very good, sir. Uh, your name, please. I am Jawad. Jawad, right? It's again you. So today you are rocking, right? Please uh, tell the CR to add one mark for you. There are three different scenarios. Obviously, there could be more as well. However, there are different scenarios uh, in which we may go for uh, or we may opt to use the uh, payback period method, right? Acha, before I actually touch upon or uh, you know restate these uh, three scenarios or three these three uh, cases in which we'll be preferring payback using payback period if i focus on the purpose of the payback period then we say that payback period is used when we want to know uh, or, or or we are deciding about a project proposal based on the time it would take to get the initial investment back, right? When time of return, that in how much time we will get the return. If time of return is the focus, in that case, we generally use payback period. However, payback period doesn't account for the time value of money concept. And, you know, because of that, uh, it is, it is uh, considered as a very bad option. We generally don't, use payback period unless we have to focus the you know the the time of return right however there are certain circumstances in which this time value of money factor uh, can be ignored maybe the one is as uh, Sir Jawad said that when the investment period is too short in that case we say that okay if the investment period is one one year one and a half year two years in this much time, obviously, money will not be devalued 
that extent. Therefore, therefore, if, you, if we ignore the time value of money factor, uh, still we can use the payback period safely. Second thing is if economy is very stable and the discount rates, they are very low. Again, we say that, okay, uh, how, like, what if, but the discount rate is just 3%, 4%. So the amount of money that is being promised or that is being anticipated to be or received in future time, it will not be devalued much. And lastly, uh, or you may say the firstly, uh, you know, when the investor to whom we are giving a briefing or when we are, uh, you know, telling the investor, uh, or, or our investor doesn't know about the financial advanced finance management concepts. In that case, you know, uh, we, we, we say that, okay, uh, because we, he doesn't, or that person doesn't know anything about the time value of money. So this method, payback period method is an easy to explain and easy to understand method. So we'll use that. So these were the points that we, we covered that in what scenarios or under what circumstances we'll be preferring or we will be using the payback period. Like I also mentioned here that payback period is good for generally the small businesses, the smaller investments, right? And in this, uh, uh, you know, uh, in this uh, discussion or under this topic, we, we uh, considered a couple of examples. Uh, do you remember the example that we touched uh, in the, the just last part of the lesson that was about uh, purchasing an ice cream machine? Whose yes, life was four sir. years. Yes, sir. Yeah? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So in that, <clears throat> that was just a small business, right? And there, there, there could be multiple scenarios in that. Like, okay, uh, if, if, if you look at the at this smaller scale, even in our practical life, in our environment, we see various examples in which, uh, you know, before actually launching a full-fledged business, uh, going to, you know, uh, what we call it, uh, going all out for a business, uh, particularly uh, for, for people, you know, who are very young still and they, they are not mature enough, their elders, let them start a small, uh, you know, the business at a smaller scale, like installing a shawarma machine, installing a, a, an ice cream machine for them, right? Or installing a photocopier for them. All these are the examples which are very, you know, very small businesses. And in this case, <clears throat> uh, we, we generally uh, think of uh, starting or purchasing a machine or starting a business using secondhand machines, which have got very less uh, you know, useful life remaining. So this is actually just a test period in which we want to see if the individual can work properly or not. Will he or she be serious enough to start this business? So at that time, we are only focused about, okay, in how much time will we get it back? We only want to be sure that we'll get enough, like uh, all the investment back. At that time, we are not very much worried that after getting all our investment back, how much profit we will make, right? This was the discussion we we did in, in context of that four years, you know, life of the machine. I hope you remember that. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. So now I guess, uh, now who is this? Can someone tell me? Who is this? If this is just a coincidence, it's fine. Otherwise, I must say shame on that person. Shame on that person. Whose brain is not yet, you know, uh, mature enough. Why, why are you in master's class? Go and sit in class one or class two. Shame on you. I've ignored it once. And now it's happening again. These are the people who, who always keep criticizing the word, oh, oh Pakistan ka system kharab and Pakistan is like that. Spending time in Chaiwala Tabas, either better, either better. Those who have no purpose in life, useless creatures. 
shameless creatures. And then they tell everybody proudly in their family and relatives, you know, I'm doing MS from somewhere. OK, so let's resume now and move on to, to this topic. I'm really sorry for this if it was just a coincidence, but it has happened three times. It should not happen. This is an MS class, right? You people are mature. If you have that, don't join this MS class then. Go and sit in the corner. Third class mentality. Okay, net present value. This is the next technique that we'll be using. When do we prefer using net present value? And when we prefer not to use net present value, right? These are the two aspects. When to use net present value and when not to use net present value. Now, these two things uh, will be covered once we have studied what net present value is and how do we calculate the net present value. But trust me, this is very important and, and uh, you know, most widely used technique for project selection. It's easy. I mean, it's not very difficult, but uh, I would like you people to be uh, please attentive in, in, in uh, you know, understanding this. So in plain terms, in plain terms, what is net present value? It is something that tells you about the amount of return that you will get, right? amount of return that you will get or uh, it's kind of like I'm just simplifying it for your understanding. I'll explain it further, but right now uh, you may consider it, it's the profit that you will get or the amount of return that you expect from a proposal, right? But like rather than saying profit, I would prefer using this term, the amount of return that you expect from a particular investment right now. If you remember, these are the project selection methods, and we use these methods before doing an investment. And at that time, we say that, okay, let's say, let's say if this is the required investment, this is one thing. Second thing we say that, let's say, if these are our expected cash inflows, right? Or projected cash inflows. This is a technique called financial modeling through which we end, we, we estimate that what would be the expected cash flows here, but obviously financial modeling, uh, modeling is uh, beyond the scope of this course. So our focus would be just based on some assumptions. Okay, right. So what was that now? What was that? Right, so our focus would be, our focus would be the initial investment and based on some assumptions, we'll say that, okay, if this is the return, expected return, or these were the cash flows, sorry, if these are the cash flows, expected cash flows, then what amount we will get as a return? For example, let's say if 10,000 is my initial investment and I'm expecting 4,000 in the first year, I'm expecting 3,000 in the second year. And let's say I'm expecting 5,000 in the third year, right? So now considering these cash inflows, what do you think? What do you think? How much extra I'm getting here against this investment? <clears throat> I'm sorry. How much return we are getting against this investment? My investment is 10,000. Like yeah, after sure. complete after like a complete of two years, you'll have like seven thousand of your original investment restored, and then mm. that will remain like three thousand. You will be getting that in the third year. So in the third mm. year, you will have your original investment restored as well as mm -hmm. your um additional uh, two thousand. Additional also. two thousand, right? Right. Yeah. Fine. So as I told you that uh, we we use payback period if time is our concern. 
that in how much time we'll get our money back, right? Here, time is not the focus. Here, amount of return is the focus. Like you just mentioned, that at the end of three years, we will be having two extra thousand, and this is this would be my return, right? This would be my return that by investing ten thousand, in return we are getting twelve thousand. That means my savings would be two thousand. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yes. Correct. However, however, yes, you know, again, we are making one. You know, uh, we are actually ignoring the time value of money here, and actually, net present value is a technique that considers the time value of money. Unlike payback period, time value of money, uh, sorry, the payback, uh, this this net present value is a technique that that use or that considers. Uh, the, the time value of money factor. So what we do in this case, we don't say that, OK, we are getting 4000 by the end of first year, 3000, 5000. We actually first convert it into present value terms. Like first I'll check that, OK, 4000. What is the present value of 4000 that I'm expecting to get after one year? Let's say it's 3800, OK? Let's say it's 3800. Sorry. Sorry, using mouse is trouble. From. Right. So now what will be the present value of 3000? Let's say after two years and I say that it's worth is let's say. Maybe 2200 or something, assuming very high rate of you know, you know discount rates and this 5000 that I will get after three years. I'll say that let's say it would be reduced to maybe 3800 or something, right? So now in this particular case, I will check that how much amount I'm saving in terms of present value, not the actual cash flows. I would say that, okay, in terms of present value, if I add these three, what, what are the amount it would be? Uh, 9,800, if I'm not wrong. Correct? 9,800. Yes, 9,800. 9,800 actually, right? So if 9,800 is my return, so do you think I will go for this investment? Apparently, apparently I'm investing 10,000 and in return, I'm getting 12,000. That means 2,000 is my saving. Or profit. However, when I check the worth of these returns that I'm expecting in one year, two year, or three year, in terms of present value, I've realized that I'm investing ten thousand, and in return, I'm getting nine thousand eight hundred. So, will you go for this uh, your investment? No. 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 So that is, in nutshell, only this is the net present value. If I'm making a profit in terms of present value, I will invest for that. If I'm not making a profit in terms of present value, I'm going to reject that project, right? I'll now we'll, we'll, with this theme in mind, let's start studying what a net present value is, and I'll explain these things further uh, on, on slides now. First thing is net present value. It is the difference between the present value of net cash flows from an investment, right? Now it is, uh, and can someone tell me what is net cash flow here? What do we mean by net cash flows? Uh, expense minus income. Expense, very right, very right, right? So it is the difference between net present value of net cash flows, like we just did, that we tried to find the present value of first 4,000, then 3,000, these were our net cash flows, and then 5,000. So we calculated the present value of all these net cash flows. Obviously, it was calculated at a discounted, uh, you know, discounted at a required rate of return, and the initial investment. So difference between the present value of all cash inflows, obviously the net cash flows, minus the initial cash outflow. Right, like yes, in so our it's case, it, yeah, need it's to, coming in. Just need to ask what was NPV yeah. over here. Net, I can't understand exactly what NPV is. Okay, 
Look, it is the difference between present value of all cash inflows and the initial cash outflow. No, let me explain it with the same example that we just discussed. Our investment is 10,000 here, correct? Are you with me, sir? Our investment, let's say, is 10,000 yes, here. Okay. And in the first year, we were expecting to get 4,000. In the second year, we were expecting to get 3,000 here. And in the fourth year, we were expecting to get 5,000, right? This was the scenario or example that we just discussed before coming to this slide. Then what did we do? We tried to have or we calculated the present worth of all these values. The present worth of 4,000, the present value of 3,000, and present value of 5,000. Then we added up all these present values and compared it with our initial investment. And in like based on the assumptions that we made, our present value was present value of all these cash flows was 9,800. Isn't it, sir? Yes, that is correct. Right, right. So now I will see the difference. What is the difference between the initial investment and present value of all cash inflows or all cash net cash flows, right? So in the, our case, if I put these, <coughs> sorry, these values in the this, this formula or in this recipe, what I would get like 9,800 here, Minus, this is my return that I'm expecting in terms of present value, minus the initial mm -hmm. outflow that is 10,000. So here the answer would be a negative value that is minus 200, correct? Correct. Why this is negative value? Why my NPV came to be negative? Because the return that I'm getting in terms of present value is lesser than my initial investment. So that is very obvious that I'm making a loss here. Is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So now in this particular case, we will reject this proposal, right? We will reject this proposal. Now let's say if that present value comes to be like not 9,800, that present value comes to be, let's say uh, 10,500, right? 10,500 and in that case <clears throat> the initial investment is still 10,000 and in that case we will get a positive value that means we will be saving 500 uh, uh, on this investment and this saving is in terms of present value apparently we are saving 2000 however we say that getting 2000 extra maybe after one two or three years will not be of that use. Actually, that 2,000 extra has been reduced to 5,000 extra, uh, 500 extra, right? So we'll make a profit or saving of 500 only in this particular case, but we are sure that we are making a profit. So when my NPV is a positive value, we consider that we are making a profit and we generally select that proposal. But when my NPV is negative, that means we are making a loss, and in that case, we reject that proposal. Is this point clear that I just mentioned? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Mm -hmm. So, right. So now here in this case, if you see, we have a very objective criteria for project selection or rejection. If my NPV is positive, what I'm going to do? Select the project or reject the project? NPV positive. So select the project. project. I'm going to select the project because it's a profit, right? And if my NPV is negative, then what? Reject. Reject the project. Then, Reject. then because because it's a loss, right? And what if my NPV comes to be zero? No loss, no profit. No profit. No profit. No profit. No profit. No. So so what? Shall I select the project in this case or not? No, sir. Sir, it depends, Should I think. Not. It depends. Yeah. yeah, that is the best answer in project management. It depends, right? So how <laughs> to, it depends on what? So it depends on the fact if you have a surplus amount of cash. Because it's there, if, if there is a likelihood. Sir, it depends on the value. 
mm-hmm. if the, it depends on the likelihood that maybe if after this period the 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 project might start paying off then if yes. you were just going to have the money spared then it's better okay okay, okay wait wait wait, wait 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 first let me let me clarify one thing here look in case of do you remember what were the limitations of payback period uh the, the time was very important you you couldn't wait a very long time <clears throat> to no, get your no, no, no what was its its drawbacks or shortcomings or negatives uh, time value oh. of money it is uh, the time value of time value of money okay number one it ignores the time value of money number two it ignores all the you know inflows after the payback period is calculated i hope you remember that if my payback period yes. is 2 years yes, sir. you know we rem- we just ignored the remaining returns however in case of net present value what did we study in case of net present value we said that present value of all cash inflows all of it means by the end of the project whatever cash flows are there will consider that ma'am just said that sir it is quite possible that after this we will be getting or we might get a profit right but there's no after this we actually in case of net present value we consider all the past possible cash inflows by the end or till the end of the project is it clear yes sir i understand i understand right yeah so so, so there's no after that right so we have already considered all the cash inflows whatever we are expecting to get so however now now let me tell you what to do or how to deal with the scenario when npv is zero obviously uh, as as uh, one of you said that when npv is zero it would depend right now it would depend on certain things let me give you a couple of examples and in those scenarios you will see that okay even if we are not making a profit but at least we are recovering all the investment so i am okay with it so what are those examples like if you are working as an ngo and this is the proposal that you are right now considering is a welfare project or an ngo project or if you are in the government in these both of these cases you might expect you know accept a project even if it is not making any profit it is just giving you everything that you are investing and that too in terms of present value you know uh, like even if two or three years would pass but still you are considering that okay i'm getting enough that it is it is addressing all the inflation and everything so whatever i will get in terms of present value i'm not making any profit but still I'm, i'll be able to recover all the amount that i had invested so in case of these two you know uh, scenarios i guess even if my npv is zero i I'm, i'm going to invest uh, in that project isn't it yes sir okay yes, sir. another scenario another scenario do you remember the co- bad covid days in those days you know people were like businesses let's say went down and they they were unable to pay the salaries even right in that case if someone like whether because of like covid like situation or any other you know uh, financial crisis in the economy or or like the recession periods we generally say that if the businesses are too low you just can't you know fire your people because you know that this period would last only for one year so during this time we just want things moving on we don't want to pay things from our pocket but even if we are we been able to you know uh, recover our cost that's fine just to you know keep the ball moving or ball rolling we just say that okay uh, you know uh, even if i'm not making any profit npv is zero but still uh, because the economy is very bad and and recession it's recession period now or because of like covid like situation things are very down and we just want you know to ke guzara ho jaye like we just keep we want to keep moving on right so in this case uh to i'll be considering npv uh, you know i'll i'll be uh, selecting a project even with a zero npv is it clear yes yes, yes. 
OK, another example or another scenario in which NPV zero might be acceptable, and that is, let's say. I have been involved or I have been conducting or, uh, you know, uh, carrying out projects of high rise buildings so far, but now I want to enter into a new market and that is road construction projects, right? I'm, I have good experience of uh, high rise buildings, but now I want to enter into a new market and this time I'm going to, uh, you know, um, I'm going to invest or I wish to invest in road construction projects. However, I don't have any experience of it yet. So in this particular case, like if I don't have any experience in that, so to gain that experience as well as to build my profile, because I won't be able to even submit my quotations or tender for for a road construction project if I don't have enough experience for that, right? So if I have enough experience, I can show that project in my profile. So I would be looking for a project, uh, let's say a 30 kilometer piece of road or a 50 kilometer piece of road in which, uh, or maybe 10 or 15 kilometers piece of road uh, project in which uh, I would I would be able to gain enough experience and I'll be able to, you know, build my profile so that in future I may get bigger, you know, projects as well. So that would give me or allow me an entry into a new market. So even if I'm not making any profit in this project, still I'm happy because I'm, you know, uh, I'm, I'm building my profile. I'm gaining enough experience. I'm making myself eligible for larger projects in future. So it's kind of a future investment. Is it clear? Yes, sir, absolutely. Right, and and there could be an, like a, a link scenario could be like uh, you must have heard the shopkeepers saying PPG aapko gaak banane ke liye sirf kar rahe That means this time you don't intend, you know, uh, making any profit, but this is just to get an entry into that system. Like this is a huge, a big organization, and this is my first work with them. So even if I don't make enough profit, at least I'll get an entry into this big, huge organization. Like generally, you must have heard vendors saying this. Yeah, let's let's get into that. Let me grab one contract at least, and then afterwards we'll, you know, uh, we'll will actually earn money for this time. Let it be cost to cost, right? Is it clear? Absolutely, yes, sir. Right? but essentially speaking, it's not still cost to cost like we are assuming here that it is cost to cost in present value terms. Please don't forget the example that I gave you in the beginning that we said that if 10,000 is your investment. And based on various cash inflows you are expecting to receive 12,000 in return, but obviously not in a single year. In one year, you were getting you were getting 4,000, in other you were getting 3,000, and then third year you were getting 5,000. So in total, you are expecting to receive 12,000 on an investment of 10,000, right? So basically you're getting 2,000 extra. However, we just considered, because now we know that what is the theme of the time value of money? So we would say that this additional 2000, you know, when I consider it, uh, this inflation and economy and risk and everything, in that case, 2000 is not enough an amount and I would like to evaluate these values in present value terms. Okay, in present value terms, how much amount I'm getting against this so that when we, that we calculated that, we saw that we were getting 9,800 only, right? So we were actually doing a loss. Apparently we were getting 2,000 extra, but when we consider, uh, you know, uh, time value of money factor, we realized that this, this 2,000 extra is nothing in three years. Because now this is what I'm saying that I'm, I'm uh, investing 10,000 in present value terms and in present value terms, I'm getting 9,800 in return or, I may say that a thing that I can purchase in 9800 right today, I'm actually purchasing that thing in 10,000. So I'm making a loss now. Is it clear? 
Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes. OK, yes, sir. so now now coming back to this, coming back to this. Uh, so what is net present value in simple terms? It is the difference between the initial investment and the present value of all cash inflows or the net cash flows obviously calculated at a required rate of return. Today we'll talk about this required rate of return again uh, in uh, you know in more detail maybe not too much detail but uh, at least you'll get an idea that why this required rate of return is here. Why not a discounted rate as written, right? So obviously this is discounted rate, but uh, why I have specifically used the required rate of return here, correct? Okay, now this is another formula. This is the same formula actually represented in an other way. I just uh, explained this formula here, uh, assuming that when you will be studying your books or, you know, uh, You'll be studying things that you own, so you may find this formula somewhere and it may appear scary to many people. But if you look at this, this is the same formula that we just saw, and that is present value of all cash inflows, right? Minus the initial cash outlay. outlay. Like here, the CO is representing what? This is the initial cash outlay, right? So it is the same thing. Now, the next thing is summation of uh, summation of CT divided by one plus I raised to the party. So if you remember, the, the formula for present value was what? Oh, you are ready for the quiz. You can immediately tell me the formula. Present value is equal to what? Future value. Future value divided by one plus I raised to the power N. Yeah. So, so this is the same thing. Future value divided by one plus i raised to the power t. So basically, this is representing the present value, right? This is representing the present value. So sum of all the present values minus the initial cash outflow. So this is the same formula. I just wanted. Obviously, I I'm not interested in you people to memorizing this. I just wanted you to know that somewhere, sometime you might encounter this formula in, in some of the books or while studying at your own or doing some research, you might encounter this formula. So, you know, you must not be confused about it. This, this means the same. It is the present value, sum of all present values minus the initial cash outlay. So now, what is the decision rule for net present value? It's very simple. If NPV is positive, accept that. If NPV is negative, reject that project. However, when NPV is zero, you know, um, the answer is it depends. And I gave you three different scenarios or situations in which you might actually uh, accept the, a project which has a zero NPV. Is it clear? Yes. <clears throat> okay, now yes, let's sir. calculate. Let's calculate the net present value here. I would request all of you. You might, many of you might be still in their beds, but still, I would just request you to please get up and grab a pen and page and try to solve this with me. Right, uh, specifically this question. I just want that you you should, you should solve it at least. Uh, the first two, two steps you should solve. After that, uh, you may just slip into a bed again if you want. Right, so please do that. Now, what does this question say? This question tells you or says that initial investment is $9,000. Net cash flows that are expected in year one, two, and three are 5090, at the end of year one, two, and three, respectively. Now you are assuming a required rate of return that is 10% per annum or annual 10%. In that case, what is the NPV of the project? First of all, uh, there are certain points that uh, I just want to brief here, like uh, or, or I've displayed here on the slide. One, the 9,000, right? This is our initial cash flow. Then. This is our first income. This is second, and this is third income that we are expecting to get. You know, uh, every year, 
So these are our incomes, right? Uske baad, the, uh, this, this is one thing. Uh, this, these are projected incomes, obviously. Then here are some formula. The net present value formula is present value of all cash inflows minus, minus initial cash outflow. This is the formula that we will be using. The same thing can be represented in this form, but as I told you, this is just a representation. You don't need to even memorize if it scares you. Then the other thing is to calculate the present value. Obviously, in this formula, we have to calculate present value of all cash inflows, right? So how to calculate present value of cash inflows? Obviously, using this formula, present value is equal to future value divided by one plus i raised to the power n, or this formula, which uses a present value interest factor table. And here we say present value is equal to future value multiplied by present value interest factor. So first, let's try using or calculating this NPV using present value formula, which says future value divided by one plus I raised to the power N. So now I want all of you to see what this mean here. And I want all of you to please calculate this term, right? After that, I won't be asking you to calculate, but for this, I want you to. For example, here, we need to calculate present value of all cash inflows. So the first cash inflow is 5090. So this is my future value one. So future value one divided by one plus I, and I here is 0 0.1, 10%, raised to the power one, because here the time elapsed between present time and this future value is one year. 2351.5. 2351.5. Okay, that's great, sir. Okay, in case of second, you know, this is our second future value that we are expecting after two years. And here, future value two divided by one plus i raised to the power two, because now two years have passed, right? From present, we'll look till this point, and two years have passed. So its present value will be calculated this way. And this is our last, you know, in uh, income, expected income, and that is 4,000. This is third future value. And in order to calculate its present value, we actually divide this future value by one plus I raised to the power three here, right? We are using this formula to calculate future, uh, sorry, present values of all these three future inflows. These are the formula. Uh, this is the formula that we are using. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Yes, right, sir. right, yeah. right. So these terms would give, uh, give us the present value of all cash inflows minus the initial cash outflow. And here, this is the initial cash. Correct? Now, I want you guys to calculate this, please, once. This is important. Cash flow is 2351 one. and the profit is 11351.54. No, no, the 2351 is what? The, the profit, first net present net value. Net present value. Okay, 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 okay. Right, right, right. Now, you must have observed one thing. Those who have calculated it themselves, they must have observed them. Like every time you have to add one plus, you know, 1.1 1 .1 raised to the power one, then raised to the power two, and then divide it, right? So this is. This is time taking process. Why I'm mentioning this thing? Because in exam, you will be given both the options. Either you can do manual calculations like this using this formula, or you can simply use the present value interest factor table. In my opinion, using present value interest factor table saves a lot of your time. A lot of your time. And this is a very less chance of error. Like here, if you just didn't square, like in rush, you you multi, you divide and <clears throat> divided it by one point one rather than uh, you know dividing it by uh, the square of one point one, your things would go wrong. It's better to not to take that risk. Most important thing is to save time. This is very important, right? I I will not you know I'll if if, if you use this formula in the exam, I'll consider it correct. I have no issues in that, 
but it is my advice that if you will use this formula, you will waste a lot of time in that. A lot of time actually. Like there might be four, five cash flows here. Right? So every time you'll be calculating the same thing, one ply one point one raised to the power five, one point one raised to the power four, and so on, and then divide it by different values, it will waste a lot of your time, right? Technically, I, I cannot say that. Uh, your answer is wrong or you are using a wrong method, you are allowed to use both of these methods. But this is my advice that avoid going doing these lengthy calculations because, you know, uh, it will it will take a lot of your time. So and, and uh, you know, exam in exam, I've observed one thing that uh, if you take the time pressure, you know, you you spoil everything. Actually. You spoil everything, especially in numeric, like all almost 90% of this paper or this subject is numeric, right? So if, if you get a pressure, you will just spoil all your calculations uh, because of that pressure. So again, th this is the point that I really wanted to emphasize on. But still, if you use this, obviously, I cannot uh, say that this is wrong. I'll whether you choose the first method or you use the present value interest factor table in both cases your answer would be considered correct right so now this as the present value that net present value that is 2351 so what do you think based on the criteria of npv will you select this project or not yes sir we will select it yeah because npv is positive very much positive rather so we are going to select this project, correct? Yes, Any sir. confusions? No, sir. No. Okay, now let's try to solve the same question using what? Present value interest factor. If I use present value interest factor from a table, how I'm going to calculate it? Look, this is the table that we'll draw. The first one is year here. Okay, let 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 me let me sorry. I'm sorry. Give me a minute, please. I actually want to save you from one confusion, right? All right, sir. Thank you. 